I find it absolutely astonishing, sir, and quite frankly, it reflects very poorly on your credibility. This is a clip taken from our previous live stream breakdown of the Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimates on March 14th, 2024. You can find the links to the full live stream replay as well as the original committee video in the description. Let's take a look. Like my NDP colleague, um, sir, I, I am completely astonished of your complete lack of preparation for this committee hearing. You start off in your opening statement talking about how you and Mr. Firth have been wrongly portrayed in media, newsprint, committee hearings, MP, word on the street. You talk about the financial stresses, the emotional stresses, and you don't have any concrete answer to clearly relevant questions. You very proudly state it that you stand behind the words of your partner, Mr. Firth, that the Auditor General's report was completely inaccurate. How on earth could you have prepared any less for this hearing by not taking 20 minutes to read the actual report? I find it absolutely astonishing, sir, and quite frankly, it reflects very poorly on your credibility. So I want to ask you some questions for clarification. Are you in a partnership with Firth or are you a director in a company registered either through the Canada Corporations Act or the Ontario Corporations Act? What is it? We are partners. Do you have a partnership agreement? Wow. Yes or no? Checking with the lawyer. Just can I confirm with the, my lawyer for one second, please? Yep. Go ahead. Just uh, mute yourself. Checking with the lawyer. <laughs> Even Vignola, I'm not sure if you see her. She has her hands out. She's like, "What? How do you not know this?" She's like turning around, like, "How? How do you not know?" I don't think it's a, I don't know. I think it's a, will this incriminate me? Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's exactly what it is. And that's why he's looking up with concern. He's like, which, which how do I answer this? Yeah, now in, in a lot of crime and, and law firm TV shows, you'll hear the term plead the fifth. We don't have that in Canada. Um, it's not called the Fifth Amendment. It, but you are, you have the right not to incriminate yourself. Well, and here's the thing. He's asking, he's asking his lawyer probably for, you know, because he's probably looking for a term that doesn't legally bind him, but I don't know how he's going to find a term that does that. Um, Cause you've said you're joint owners of the company, your partners. Vignola is still in disbelief. Sorry. We are a corporation and I am a shareholder for that corporation. So you're not, not in a, a, you're not in a partnership. You may refer to yourself as partners, but you don't have a legal partnership agreement, correct? That's correct. Okay. So you are a director and you under and you didn't understand that directors have joint and several liability. Meaning that you're both responsible for consequences of the acts of directors. You're aware of that now, sir? Um, I don't believe that to be true. Okay. Well, you can check with your lawyer on that. Um, Mr. <laughs> Firth has put it out there in real evidence that he has committed, not on one occasion, but on multiple occasions, acts of forgery that would be defined as a criminal act under the Criminal Code of Canada. He claims it was a mistake. And as a former prosecutor... Pretty much every single accused that I dealt with in the last 20 plus years always claim they made mistakes. You understand, sir, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You understand that? Sure. So if Mr. Firth was willing to do that, but this is, I'm talking about the Botler uh, complaint, on at least four or five occasions, without consulting, without getting approval, 
without getting clearance from Bottler to change the actual resume to ensure they received a contract, it really begs the question, how many times has your 50-50 partner, director, Mr. Firth, done that on other contracts? Do you have an answer to that? I don't have I don't have it I don't have any knowledge of that. No, because what he does is up to him and what you do is up to you, correct? Is that your understanding? Yes. I see. Now, who <laughs> was responsible for your web design on your website that probably fraudulently identifies several key government employees boasting about the value uh, of your uh, of your company who was responsible for creating this web design um i'm not sure i believe that we did hire out someone to to build our website for us in 2015. really ladies and gentlemen it's amazing it's not, you know it's not surprising such such secure and confidential information is um is is beyond mr anthony's reach it's it's not surprising you know this stuff is such behind behind such lock and key that there's no possible way that anyone would be able to actually determine who wrote their website oh there it is there it is Does it say when? This 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 is this is who did their website. <laughs> Strong Vine, Ottawa Marketing and Branding Solutions. If you're visiting us, uh, chances are you're looking for a new website, graphic design, printing, or an HD video. There you go. Strong Vine, ladies and gentlemen. Strong Vine, provider for website development for GC Strategies. But you know. Um, but the owner doesn't know who did so it. So difficult. So difficult to find these answers, everybody. So difficult. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Who was the company? Um, I, I don't have that information in front of me right now. You'll supply the information to us? Yeah, I can check my records. Okay. And in addition to Mr. Barrett's questions to you, you will also provide to me by, I'm going to give you seven days to do this, sir, the names of all the government employees that are referenced uh, in your website boasting about your particular company you'll do that because you didn't have the answer as to who they were but in seven days you'll provide me with that information won't you we can try and find that information for you 